happy world's consumers right day is something to be celebrated and the civil society has such a huge role to play in this area and uh, you, you know we we forget uh, we have forgotten so many times you know the role that consumers rights and a uh, competition you know we you know that here in antac uh, the branch that takes care of the consumer uh, rights and consumer protection part is the same that takes also a, a issue on the competition side of a, a, of a, the economic a market. And we forget so much that this is at the bottom of a good performing economy. Yes, and a good performing not for growth, but for people. And so a, so happy really to be here and to participate uh, today. And Stephen, thank you for moderating and for being with us here also. So dear, dear all, dear consumers, international members, uh, uh, friends, uh, let, me, <laughs> let me say first that uh, when I read uh, the title of today, Fair and Responsible AI, for, for consumers, I thought again, you know, that we are very much in this Dickens world. Yes, uh, uh, when he wrote the tale of two cities. Yeah, because in a way, not taking the first phrase of Dickens, but the second one, the follow, uh, the follow one, where he says that it was the season of light. It was the season of darkness. It was the spring of hope. It was the winter of despair. <laughs> and probably when we think about AI, we think about all those things. You know, we think about how to make use of the good part of it, the light part of it that can, you know, help us so much. And I will talk about it. But also we have to, to talk about the risks and the other part of it. And, and see how we can mitigate them and regulate them in a way that won't take away the good, the good of the technological uh, development. So, uh, as the, as we celebrate so this uh, World Consumers Rights Day, it is fitting that we reflect on this new era of for consumer relations to ensure that AI is fair and responsible for consumers. ANCTAD as the focal point on consumer protection within the UN, as we said before, is committed to understand the implications of AI for consumer protection. I am delighted uh, to, to, uh, you know, to, uh, uh, with you, discuss such a new theme that has become so important in all the discussions because the eruption of artificial intelligence in consumers' lives has put our societies at a crossroads. As UN Secretary General Guterres acknowledged, AI has the potential to turbocharge global development from monitoring the climate crisis to breakthroughs in medical research and it offers new potential to realize human rights, particularly health and education. For consumers, AI holds a huge promise of welfare, convenience, efficiency, efficiencies, and also personalization on services and treatments. Indeed, there is even the promise well, of I done what? protection itself. Un eh, informe reciente de UNCTAD de Consumer Protection Agencies concludes that AI can be instrumental in the optimization of these crucial systems. There is also the famous startup, Do Not Pay, <laughs> that many of you know which helps consumers deal with murky claims and invoices through the use of chat GPT. However, having said that, 
even as we recognize all these promises, and as I said before, we have to recognize the risks and the ethical considerations that AI brings. I would highlight two of this. First, there is the risk of being left out. Only 36% of the population in least developed countries is online. And the gender gap in internet use shows no sign of narrowing. AI will never be fair as long as over 3 billion people cannot access it. So the problem of the gap of the inequalities is still there. Second, there is the risk of abuse. The potential for AI to perpetuate and amplify biases and discrimination infringe open privacy, enable widespread scams, and undermine democratic processes is a stark reminder of the ethical quagmire we must navigate. Deep fakes have the potential for misleading consumers on a mass scale. Today, it is already possible to have a deep fake celebrity promote deep fake product using deep fake videos and deep fake voices. So these risks highlight the imperative for a new generation of consumer protection policies and regulations. Policies designed to mitigate harm and ensure that the vast potential of AI benefits reach all consumers fairly and ethically. So dear friends at ANCTA, we've been busy unpacking the challenges and opportunities that AI holds for consumers. <clears throat> our, <clears throat> sorry, our informal working group on consumer protection in e-commerce already hosted two webinars in 2024. One was about AI risks, and the other on how technology can better enforce consumer laws. So let me highlight four takeaways from these meetings. First, we need to empower both consumers and policymakers through AI literacy. It is no longer enough to know how to read and write and browse the web. We must also understand how AI systems learn, make decisions, and potentially influence our choices. And I say this, Elena, with a lot of humbleness, because when I went to a meeting of a management in the UN and we started to talk about AI, I realized we didn't have anybody in the administration of of ANCAD that knew about AI in the application of, of our operations, for example. And I started to do this, yes? So this is a reminder that we have to do this, that we have to bring this knowledge to our organizations, to our thinking, that we have to try to massify. <laughs> do you say that, that in English? I don't know. Or is a word that I have just made up <laughs> that to make more massive the understanding it's a good word. <laughs> more popular <laughs> to populate <laughs> uh, you know uh, the understanding of how this works second we must support countries in developing national ai strategies that align with global principles focusing on safeguarding consumer rights and fostering an environment where ethical AI can flourish. Thirdly, we must engage the private sector. A call upon technology companies to adopt ethical AI development practices, prior, making a priority of the consumer well being and societal benefit over short term gains. 
This includes committing to transparency and AI, AI algorithm. I think that is a very important thing. We are talking also about regulation. So you know when something you are seeing is AI or real <laughs> because we cannot distinguish. So the consumers need to be protected and have to be able to distinguish. And uh, obviously uh, this, this means engaging in responsible data practices and actively seeking to mitigate biases. So we need to include the private sector here because the private sector is ahead of the curve, they know. And many times we don't know what is the right regulation or protection that we need if we don't understand deeply you know, the sector and, and what is happening in the private sector. And fourthly, and lastly, we must advocate for a global framework of fair and responsible AI built uh, on the three pillars of transparency, accountability, and inclusivity. Transparency, accountability, and inclusivity. Transparency in AI algorithms and data practices, accountability in AI developers and deployers so that they are responsible for the social impacts of their technologies, and inclusivity in both how AI is developed and in who can access it. All of these proposals must recognize the crude reality that there is a global governance deficit in AI. This is something that our Secretary General uh, of the UN, uh, Antonio Guterres, through the Summit of the Future, wants to change. The UN's unique mandate and membership means we must play a central role. I invite all of you here to submit your inputs to the UN High Level Advisory Board on AI to enrich its final report on the issue. And you know that as part of the negotiations with the member states within the UN, we are talking about the uh, uh, Global Digital Compact, the DGC. Now we have also an acronym for it. <laughs> so the Global Digital Compact is something important that we are going to discuss and hopefully agree in September when we go to the summer of the future. So let me just uh, finalize saying that, you know, history, teaches us that groundbreaking technologies always pose challenges alongside opportunities. From the steam engine to the internet, every era of innovation has demanded new rules, new safeguards, and new ways of thinking. AI is no different. What is different maybe is the speed of the change because there is no time <laughs> almost to adjust. We have to run. Rapid changes require rapid reactions. And just as previous, previous generations tackled their technological revolutions, we will have to work tirelessly to ensure that the AI revolution benefits all, that it doesn't leave anybody behind. And uh, we will have to work a lot together to partner, to cooperate, to understand, uh, to really make this our legacy. You know, the legacy of this technological advance that can be so beneficial and that we need to make it be beneficial for all. So thank you very much. Thank you so much, Secretary General, for these 